Let's do a little progress report on the babe bus, shall we? First, I am going to do a whole lot less of getting footage of me doing all the odds and ends work because based on the feedback I've gotten on this channel, I don't think many people at all actually give a damn what it looks like when I hang a curtain or put down a floor tile. I think most of you are here just to see what kind of insane thing I'm going to say next. So, and you don't have to pray hard for that because it's coming at you whether you want it or not. But a lot of odds and ends have been finished this week. Um, each of them is very time consuming, but she looks gorgeous. So let's kind of go from where we left off and then to what I just finished a couple minutes ago. Remember these, the decals? All right, so I touched these up with some gold paint because we put a little vote on my Patreon account and everyone said gold. So these all got a little bit of brushed gold. Um, I used a metallic paint to pull this off and literally just feathered um, the paint across the edges. Some of you asked me, can you um, add a paint pigment to joint compound to get that color effect and not have to go through painting it afterwards? I had to move over here to rest my arm. <laughs> This phone is humongous. It's unmanageable. Um, yes, you can do that. And actually, professional drywallers do add paint pigment to their joint compound. Um, they blue and yellow, and I think there's like a pink. And that's to let each of the crew members know what stage the drywalling is at um, so that they know that there's two levels is pink or one level is blue and um, it's sort of a, a man communication system but when joint compound dries it it's like chalk it's very sort of like brittle and not aesthetic so you're gonna want to paint over it anyway so to answer that question yes you can add coloring to joint compound to get those a color when they dry but it is not going to look like that you really need to get your stencil back out hold it up on the wall and then feather it with some paint on the blog that's associated with this channel babecavebuilds.com babecavebuilds.com um, I have all the instructions and a lot more stuff there if that would be helpful all right so I did that let's talk about the cabinets especially this one that just fell down Whatever, I'm too tired, I'll do it later. All right, I did not opt. See that? Look, it's, uh, I, this, this hanging basket is what I feel like on the inside right now, just, just falling down. All right, I did not opt for the full framed out cabinets for lots of reasons. Number one is cost. That's very expensive to have custom made cabinets you have got to accommodate the curve. You accommodate the curve. That's like a that's like a rap lyric. Write that down. That's going to be in some smack the bitch up music one day. Accommodate the curve. Okay, moving on. You have to accommodate the curve. There's a lot going on here with the framing and anyway, I just I just didn't want to deal with it. That's that's the short answer. I don't want to deal with it. Also, once you start putting things in here, it gets claustrophobic real quick. I mean, real quick. So some people have asked me, did you do a layout? Did you do a design layout for the van before you started building? And the answer is no. Um, I dabbled around with one piece of software and the moment that the kitchen cabinets got put in, I realized that what software does not give you is a true sense of just how little space this is. So as I started putting things in, I thought if I add full blown cabinets up top, it's going to feel really cramped in here. So I went to the Jesus store and Hobby Lobby and I love Hobby Lobby. Do not speak ill of Hobby Lobby. I love Hobby Lobby. I got these wire baskets. Yeah, I got these wire baskets. And then I think there's a little one back yonder to put like my phone or my revolver, one or the other, maybe both. Just got to reach for the right one. Uh, and then under the closet, I'll show you in a second, I have some more. These are lightweight. I'm not a fan of open cabinets because you can see all your accoutrement in there, but they're very light and I can always upgrade to full blown cabinets later, but these were 50% off. It wasn't very expensive and I think they look pretty cool. I like that. So this will be like more kitchen stuff and then this will be like more 
bathroom stuff. I don't know. We'll deal with that on movement day. All right. So also at the Jesus store with God, all things are possible like these knobs. Point Casey. God, I, this is what it must be like for the weather people where you're just imaginary screen hoping to get it right. Um, these were $3.99 each, but they have a little tinge of copper in them, which matches the penny countertop which is being guarded right now. Um, and then these, check these out. Okay, that has, they have these little, these little globes in them. I thought that was highly predictable and yet just so quaint. Okay, so also I added curtains. Yeah. Ooh. All right, see how the van curves again, accommodate the curve, accommodate the curve. This whole roof it has a little bit of a curve, which is a real pain in the ass to deal with when you're trying to frame anything. And I just did not want to see whatever it is I put up there. There's also some conduit up there. So I got a curved shower curtain rod. Um, I use them in the babe cave and it's, you know, these new shower curtains, they bow out, right? To add some depth to your shower. I'm not sure what these hand motions are supposed to do but you're getting it right okay so the curved shower curtains i use them in my house the babe cave um as curtain rods because they just kind of pull the curtains a little bit out from the window and add some depth and i i just thought they looked pretty neat plus the edges the hinges will rotate so they give you a lot of flexibility on where you can attach to the wall when you are renovating a 110 year old house nothing is straight there's no such thing as a 90 degree angle so that was really helpful so i took those curved shower curtains with the flexible rods and there's those back there and then over here same thing see the curve oh i'm not see my weather my weather girl is is not on point um these are attached in two different directions on each side just by a little bit wouldn't have been able to do that with a standard curtain rod so i did this for a couple reasons but the main one was to keep light and temperature out from coming in here i paid a stupid amount of money for a blackout curtain and let me tell you something i don't know what the definition of that is but it still lets light in so i have not fully solved the problem of when these lights are on in here how to keep it all from out there. I'm guessing that is a Reflectix something solution. I haven't, I haven't figured that part out, but you, you do still see light, um, even with the blackout curtain. Yeah, you can see it from the cab and not a big deal, but if I, it's late at night and I'm in here and somebody sees that there's a glow on, I mean, a decent human being will, you know, tried to alert the owner that their lights are on and a shitty human being will try to get into it. So both types of beards are not what you want to deal with at night. So I've, I've still got to work on that. Okay. Again, a little bit of, a little bit of glam here. Um, so when I photograph old buildings, I usually take a souvenir. <laughs> They're abandoned buildings. So don't get on my ass about that. Um, but I really like doorknobs doors staircases and obviously tin tiles those are my collector's items um, mainly because the versions of those that we make today are dirt cheap and poor quality so these are really special um lewis youtuber lewis sent me this one thank you and then um i don't even remember where all this stuff came from Anyway, uh, Michael, this is where Michael signed the board. That was when we did the electric work. And I put a photo of this on Instagram and like the women of Instagram jumped my ass. or like, where's the sticker? Easy ladies, go take a cold shower. This is satin paint and the sticker started to peel up on the edges. So I called Michael, called Michael and told him that I needed a new sticker and everything is going to be fine. For the flooring, 
Initially, I wanted to get the rubber stall mats that the farmers here uh, use for their horses, and that's because they're terribly durable. They also are terribly stinky in that they off-gas a lot, so that wasn't an option. I know a lot of people put vinyl in their vans because it's cheap and it's somewhat flexible, it's easy to install. I just didn't like vinyl. It's I mean, just feel it, okay? And then take the vinyl or the laminate and add the adhesive, and it's still heavy. And I'm trying to be really conscious of how much weight gets added to the van at this point. So, racking my brain, racking my brain, think, 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 think. And then I thought, well, what about those mats that are in my gym? I mean, they people sweat on them, and they're easy to clean, and they drop water on them, and they don't puff up and absorb. And so those are foam tiles. So I found um, a type of flooring that's a foam tile that has a faux wood grain on it, and that's what I installed in here. It's about, I think it's five-eighths an inch of foam, and this is the universal sign for foam. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the entire floor was like 70 bucks. You don't need glue, you just cut the tile where you need to, it's plug and play. Yes, you can see the little seams, but who cares? And at 70 bucks, if I, you know, figure out that I just trash this van all the time every time I get in and out of it, or I need a more durable flooring, I can rip it up like that. I'm through and it's soft it's so soft so this is I'll be able to do my van life obligatory yoga poses to get likes on Instagram in here I mean I can downward dog the shit out of this van with these tiles like hell yeah this is not finished yet when it is finished this will pop up right the door to the crawling closet will also act as another kitchen surface area. Um, it's not finished yet, so it will slam on my head, which I'm sure you all will think is funny. I don't. But, uh, all right, so the flooring continues. See that? See that? Where is it? Right there. That is why I added the screens. It is February and these big ass bugs are already in here. Oh, I hate these bastards. They're gonna die a very lonely death tonight. Oh, they're so gross. If I scream and start crying because one of them lands on me, somebody delete this video from the internet. Oh, they're so nasty. Anyway, the flooring goes all through here and into the back and we have more Jesus store bins. We also have more back here. So what I'm thinking is there'll be like socks and my unmentionables right here and t-shirts right here. And then, and this is the whole reason I designed it this way. I watched van people like digging through boxes and like ugh, finding their clothes. I, I don't want to live that life. I'm not a part of that game. So, I added suspension rods right here and then that way if these hold up which I may have to get sturdier suspension rods that's kind of we'll wait and see um, but I can actually hang my clothing so I'm stoked about that you know all my designer sweatshirts and sweatpants cuz I am all about being fashion forward this took a little bit of engineering when it works there's little magnets in there, they stay shut, and these bastards don't get in here. But there was there was a breach in the wall, folks. Okay, I'm gonna scoot up. In the very back of the van, we still have a light issue in that these were also supposed to be blackout curtains, and in these big ass windows, you can still see light. Um, have not figured out a solution to that yet, but these screens are full length and they go all the way around. And <laughs> when I have them shut, they do keep the bugs out. All right, a couple things I wanna show you over here. When you own a ProMaster, the edges of the van are, it's like a curved grate. And I had no idea how to frame that out and cover it up and it was just kind of like hanging out there. So what I got on Amazon was, see that? It's hard, it's a little hard to see. Okay, that 
is self-adhesive felt. So I just slapped it right on there and now, oh, <laughs> and the self-adhesive felt just wrapped right around a very hard to frame curve. I've seen some people go ahead and frame those out, frame out this whole area back here. And the reason that I didn't do that was because another YouTuber, who I'm so sorry, I can't remember the name, but she pointed out that that plastic grate that I thought was so ugly is actually the entrance to get to the brake light. So you really do not want to frame out that ugly curve. So instead, a little bit of felt, a little bit of glue, I can take it right off in a heartbeat if I want to. So again, the shower curtain curves around I've got a little bit of privacy with the curtains. I've got to figure out a way to totally block out the light from these back windows. More Jesus store baskets. I can use these for gear or shoes. We've got flooring. And then I added a cinch. I think this is called a cinch, I'm pretty sure. And that just keeps grime from getting underneath and getting onto the plywood. So attached that. And I think last but not least, behind here, right there, there is a carbon monoxide detector. And let me t just say why, real quick, I put it where I did. In a ProMaster, you have vents that go from the outside of your van, and I actually cut the um, plywood so that the vents could still function, but the vents come out right up here. So when you have a generator, or if you're turning on your van and just running it to kind of heat things up, the um, exhaust pipe and your generator exhaust are going to be back around here. So if something is going to kill you with carbon monoxide, the fumes are likely going to get up in this area first. So I put my carbon monoxide detector back here. I certainly hope you get one in your van conversion. Um, that would be a really shitty way to die after doing all this work, right? We want to go out in a blaze of glory. Okay, so I think, I think that is all for this progress report. Um, it's, I'll tell you, the, these little projects, when you get to the end of any major construction, they're just really time consuming. You, I've got to like wait for products to come in, send things back, try, you know, it's just, it's like a lot of plug and play. Um, and sometimes it doesn't play at all, but we're getting there and soon it'll be move-in day. So thank you so much everybody for hanging out. Gosh, since November, October, we've been doing this, but we're getting really close. That flooring coming in is a huge, huge finish. It was very time consuming. I'm going to go to take a bath and I'll see you at the next update. Thanks everybody.